everybody. Thanks again for tuning in to Cameras Rolling. I'm really excited about my show tonight. Now, we know I love to have creative artists. I interview all sorts of people. You've seen them, you know, throughout the 14 years, whether a puppeteer, um, singer, songwriter. So tonight, I'm going to focus on something that's really kind of a personal favorite. That's myself. <laughs> that's me. No. <laughs> Really, it is a play that I'm in, that I'm really excited, and I hope some of you people come to see. And so, without further ado, we're going to get this show started and rolling. Cameras rolling, take one, with my guest, Andrew Rosenstein. Wait, wait. Go. Slate, oh, say they, your name. I, Andrew Rosenstein. I'm, is that okay? <laughs> nice to have Good. you here. Thank you for having me here. So, Andrew, you are my co-star in this play that mm -hmm. I'm so excited to talk about. Because I think it's important to have original plays that really have a meaning with them. Right? Absolutely. Now, I've had Jacques Lamar on my show many times. I'm sure people are, are actually familiar with him now. We um, collaborated on a play, and it is a comedy about Scientology. It kind of reminds me of Book of Mormon, but not a musical. So it tells the truth about what happens in Scientology, but it's not like a scathing documentary or no. we, we have to, you know, expose internal abuses because we are not members. We never have been. But I've known people who have been when I lived in L.A. So that's a little bit of the history of the play. Now, Andrew is playing the person who recruits me. You are a Scionomics a leader of sorts, and you have to get people in. So what do you, now, as, as an actor, what, how do you prepare for the role? Like, what part of you do you think of and what motivates you for the role that you have? Because it's not an easy role. No, it was, it was, it was pretty complicated, and it took a right. little while to, to get used to the character. But I think that, you know, you said he's more of like a leader. I, I, th I think he's more of just like a tool. Yeah. I think, you know, and I think that the, the character is very... Um, you know, I would say damaged, and you don't really know it right away until like later in the show. But he he seems like more of a puppet, um, and he's you know he's he's had a hard time with his life. But again, you don't know that till the end of the show. But I, I, right. I always saw the character as kind of quirky. Um, you know, I would say a little nerdy, maybe a little awkward. Mm -hmm. And you know, I myself have you know minor awkward tendencies. Yeah, I was gonna I, say I might use those <laughs> adjectives to yeah. describe. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Call me crazy. I, I, thank you very much. I thought <laughs> they were welcome. more subtle than that. You're welcome. But no, uh, so it's funny because for a big part of the character, because I see, I saw the character as being very awkward. I um, I took some of my own personal awkward tendencies that I think I have, and you know other tendencies that people say that I have, mm -hmm. and I just embellished them and just dramatically brought them out like in, in every single scene and pretty much for every single sentence I'm talking I just I wanted this character to be very um, you know I wanted him to be lovable but at the same time I wanted people to feel bad right right and yeah well and also what what I think of for your motivation is you really want me to join because you have to have me join because there's so many people who put pressure on you in yeah, the organization exactly so you can see he really 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 wants it yeah. And I, what I like about this play is it's not making fun of people or how, how weird people are in cults. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's more explaining why people are drawn to cults. Mm -hmm. And as my character, Honey Labrea, it, she's had her own um, odyssey, let's say. When, when Jacques first wrote the role, well, he wrote it, actually, he wrote my character as a one-woman play, but we couldn't really work with that because we needed a subject matter. And she was very, to me, she's like um, like me and drag. <laughs> like really, right. really exaggerated, <laughs> but yet really hard-edged and very, very bitter, very angry type of humor, which is good for like a stand-up act, but not if you're going to be telling a story and you're going to be on the stage the whole right. time. So what I love is now Honey is seen for how damaged she is and what kind of you know personal tragedy she's had and why she's making her decisions now right exactly yeah right. yeah so i think i i think um you know with your character i feel like as soon as you open your mouth you're like oh wow this this person's damaged like you know right off the bat right and i think like in regards to my character i think it just shows 
you know, not only does it show your journey, but it shows, you know, Scott's journey as well. Right. Um, and it just, it's it slowly, his, his character is, you know, broken down slowly over time. And I think the realization for you as well as myself, as well as Scott, is like, wow. Yeah. I am not here because I want to be. Right, right. Yeah. But you did originally want to be, and that's and that's what people don't right. understand. Yeah, they're like, if if they're that intelligent, because you you were um, you were going to be your character was going to be an actuary. Mm -hmm. You have to be very intelligent for that. And uh, if you were that intelligent, why are you doing this? So I really feel strongly about that. That I am I'm sick of of, of judging other people mm -hmm. in cults and shaming other people. So that's why I really really love this role. Because it, it really allows for people to have more compassion for, for victims, actually, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, there's another role in our play, and she plays Maggie. And she's the Sea Org commando. But it's, it's Sea Org is the Scientology term. What, she's the... Just Org. Just Org. Just yeah, the that, org. that's it. She's just the Org. <laughs> <laughs> but she is a wonderful actress. And Ingrid, I, I met doing a, a play about three years ago. She is brilliant because she needs the super hard edge of like a prison warden mm -hmm. because we are being punished for crimes in Scientomics mm -hmm. slash Scientology. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. She's got a very militant, you know, sense yeah. to her and I think she pulls it off beautifully. Right. Yeah. Oh, she does. She's wonderful. So tell me more about you, about little Andrew. <laughs> Growing up, yeah. because it's really interesting. You're a pediatric dentist, mm -hmm. which really is, you know, we got the left side and the right side. That's a different side of the brain. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, um, how, how do you reconcile both careers? I mean, and, and do you want to make acting more of a career? Who um. knows? The sky's I, the limit. I'd say if, you know, once my student loans are slowly started to pay off a little right. bit more, I mean, you know, I'll start looking into doing it maybe a little more full time. Mm -hmm. But um, no, it's funny you say that the left and right side of the brain, but I think that, you know, working with kids, um, you know, you're, you're on stage all day. You can't right. have a bad day. You're always, you know, being goofy, you're immature and, you know, joking around and stuff and trying to make, you know, kids comfortable and happy. So I think like I found that, you know, I found a way to meld both of them where, you know, you, you, you're on stage performing all day. Right. It's like that's, that's part of the job. But no, I've been, I've been acting and performing since I was in middle school. Yeah, um, you were. And, and tell me about what first gave you the bug. Because I, I always love hearing that. What, what gave you the bug where you realized this is something you enjoy doing? I was, you know, a lot of it was peer pressure initially. I did Tech Crew for Guys peer, and Dolls. Peer pressure for a play. That's interesting. To, be, to, to audition for it. Oh, really? Yeah. So I, I was doing Tech Crew for Guys and Dolls. I was in seventh grade. And um, someone said, hey, why don't you try out for next year's show? And I said, oh, I'll think about it. You know, I could go there. I've never really done it before. Um, I've always been a big movie buff, so I just love the whole concept of performing anyway, but I've never done it for real. Well, so, did, did you go see Broadway shows? or did Oh, you I was, see, oh yeah, yeah, I saw Broadway shows growing up. I saw, you know, I think the first show I actually saw was one of the um, South Windsor High School musical productions, okay. and that's when I first yeah. got interested. But So I went to this audition. I was, you know, peer pressured to going to a bunch of friends of mine who've done shows before. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I auditioned, um, thought I bombed it, and then the next day they had the cast list um, posted near the gymnasium, and... Uh, I got the lead role in Fiddler on the Roof. I was Tevye. And, nice. Um, I was shocked. My parents were shocked, and they were worried. They're like, "Oh my God! Like I've never. I don't know what to expect. We're gonna just go, and it could be a train wreck. It could be. I have no idea what you know." Right. And I stepped out and caught the bug right away, and I've been acting ever since. That was eighth grade. Yeah. What and one of the things I love about your story is that you have also done stand-up comedy. Yeah. As a now, when you do your stand-up comedy, do you do you go as a pediatric dentist, or do you talk about? Uh, things of people of your age or what do, what's your what, what do you use as your um, your source of comedy it's more self-deprecating you know I talk about my family I make mm -hmm. fun of myself um, I don't you know jump to the pediatric dentist thing right away like <laughs> I, I, I have it's a great yeah, source, I, material I, I think source it'd be a real reservoir oh it, it is it right. is but um you know I I don't jump to that right away I work it into my act a little bit um, it's it, it's fun. It's you get your you know performance fix and everything. And I like you, I like being able to write my own stuff, that kind of thing. And I actually got into that because you know through college and and through 
you know, dental school, I didn't really have time to do any kind of performing. I couldn't, you know, stick to a rehearsal schedule or anything. So I got into comedy because it's more of a, a quick fix. You know, you show up and you just show up to any open yeah. mic or any show and it's like you get a five minute or seven minute set and you just go and do your thing. So that's, that's how I was able to keep performing in my life when I couldn't do anything right. more, you know, any, any kind of bigger commitments. Um, and then now that I have more time, I do enjoy um, acting like this and having right. a character is a lot, you know. No, I was going to say, because that's really like just jumping into the deep end. Yeah. I mean, I, I really admire that because stand-up comedy, you don't have a director or another actor or a role or dialogue, anything to fall back on. It's just you. Yeah, pretty much. Are you funny? Do people like you or <laughs> do you suck? Pretty much. Yeah, right? it's hit or miss. <laughs> yeah, and so have, like, have you had experiences of both? Have you had the highs and lows already? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a, you know... A, a veteran by any means you know right. I've never done it for money really I, I, I was it was more like intermittent I guess you can call me like an open mic comic mm -hmm. you know was no never anywhere near a career I wasn't hitting the grind like all these other really right. funny comedians are um, so if anything it was just more of a way to build charisma and you know right. it was again it was a performance fix like I right. was able to you know do your thing and you, you can put you know uh, characters into it you can do impersonations of people like I used to do for like making fun of my family and stuff so right, you, right. Can, you can make it whatever you want to make it there's a lot of comedians who go on and you know they have funny voices that they do for their whole act to make people think that they, you know like a, like a Pee Wee Herman yes. or you know they're just you know that kind of a thing right. so you can make it what you want it so that's what I did and it was, yeah. it was fun so yeah, so it so it would be nice. Do, do you have a website or anything where people can look up where you perform? Or is no, it? it's 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 like word to you know yeah, word of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing crazy. And so now what? Okay, so we we hear about how you um, you got the acting bug and mm -hmm. you like performing. Um, you're the oldest in your siblings. I'm the oldest of four. Yes. Of four. So it, it could have been just wanting a lot of attention, too. Probably. Is it, yeah. Is it four? Do you have brothers, sisters? Or? Um, yeah, it goes boy, girl, boy, girl. Boy, girl, boy. Yep. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that's, are, are you all about the same age? or? No, I, there's, uh, I'd say there's about two, two, two and a half year difference between all of us for that's, the most part. The youngest yeah. one, I'm nine years older than her. Oh, okay. Than, than okay. Her, so but, it's but, still, but still, it's, a, it's you know, because when you're, when you're a child growing up, Children just naturally crave a lot of attention. So it's a part they, of it, I'm sure. Yeah, so Absolutely. they do what they do what they got to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. So okay, so let's let's talk about you getting into place here, and let's talk about our director Shane. Sure. Because it's the first time I've ever worked with him, and um, you know I've been you know I'm what maybe two three years older than you. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I but I've had a lot of experience with different types of directors. This director. So Shane is like the first director I've had that I really feel like he does view us all as clay. Right. And he's molding us all and he has the perfect timing for how we are formed as just like, we don't know what we're going to do with the character, where, you know, what's our motivation. And then we get more into the action. But the action is really all dialogue pretty much yeah so he has to really pay close attention to detail to have things run smoothly don't right. you think no i agree and i think like you said you know we are clay but i think that once we get to a certain point he lets us you know mold mold ourselves like right. you know he'll he'll give us an idea of how the scene's going to go and you know you know he, he gets specific with certain things but i feel like for the most part he he wants you to just do at the time what you feel is comfortable or what you feel is right right and you know if he doesn't like it or wants you to pull back he'll tell you and if he doesn't say anything it means you know it just looks like the natural progression of the scene and how these characters are interacting. So I feel like there's a lot of freedom as well. Right, right. And is, so it's been a it's been a great experience. And isn't so it nice to be with somebody who's positive mm -hmm. and fun and funny? Yeah. Because I feel like you know in the the world of you know small theater, you know drama, there there can be uh, people who um, are just I don't know for lack of a better word just. <laughs> Not very pleasant to be yeah. around. Yeah. You know, they will, they they go into this for a certain reason and their egos get invested. Yeah. And what I find really refreshing is we're really having fun. Yeah, I mean, it's great. No one's 
No one's going to get rich doing this. I'll, although I'm very <laughs> thankful for the check I am going to get. Ooh. No, I'm kidding. Nice. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Several figures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of people within the community theater, you know, that are a little nasty. Yeah, I'm just like relax. It's not Broadway. Okay? Exactly. Calm, calm down. Exactly. And this is just <laughs> this is just like the perfect world for that. Oh, of course. And the writer Jacques. Now, we've, now you've never have you ever been um, an actor at his readings or? No, I haven't. I, I, I've actually only hung out with him and met him that one time for the read through. Oh, okay. Was, so uh, yeah. So. Jacques, you know, he's he's pretty notable around here. I mean, he's he's done his plays at Theater Works. He's had his plays. Um, I loved I Lost, I Made Spaghetti, tour, tour nationally. Okay. Yeah, so he does, you know, he's doing really, really, really well. One thing I love about his, his comedies is that he seems to have that innate sense of rhythm for jokes. Yeah. Which is, which is kind of like, you know, um, Neil Simon-esque. Yeah, yeah, it, even exactly. Though, but he's a little bit more edgy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right. And he doesn't hold back. So, I mean, if for anyone watching this show, it is a ma mature mm -hmm. sense of humor. Of course. We can be downright raunchy. Yes. <laughs> which, but it's, I mean, it's... Which is fun. It's, some of it's like, you know, it's over the top, but it, it works. It's not like it's, you know, right. I, and, and it's, 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 it's life. It's realistic. You know, you're not going to hold back. Yeah. Like it's, I think the, to really understand these characters and to really, you know, have these characters express themselves, like you can't really hold back. And I think that everything that is said and done works. It does. It does. You know, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just thrilled that, that he gave us the, the opportunity to shine oh, yeah. in these roles. Yeah. It's been incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's been a real, I, I feel really grateful for that for sure. Me too. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about what you plan to do. Like, okay, so we're, we're going to finish this play. Every, everything's going to go great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it might even get um, a great review in the New York Times. Let's just think big. Hey, you never know. Where would you like to, to see yourself, like, say, in, like, five years or so, five, ten years? Five, ten years? Yeah. Within this? Yes, w within, within acting and maybe, you know, uh, you're, you know, I, I don't know where you are with your pediatric dentistry. Um, I, I'm currently at a practice, um, yeah. which is a phenomenal practice. I definitely see myself, you know, continuing yeah. to work because um, I, I, I really enjoy, enjoy, I enjoy Smart. doing what, yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> My dad's like, eh, go to work. Yeah, it's like, but go dad, to, I want to be a dancer, yeah, you know. That's cool. I can't really work now. You can okay. dance after, after you work. Right. Yeah. And then, but um, no, definitely that, you know, that's a big part of my life and uh, I really enjoy doing that. No regrets with that. Um, in terms of the acting, um, I'm also really big into film. I've always loved movies. Um, I love, you know, performing for, for film and, you know, I, editing. And I, I love the whole process of making a movie. I've done a couple like silly comedy shorts and that kind of thing. Um, I'm actually, I'm in an independent film that's going to be coming out uh, next year. Um, that's going to be sent to a bunch of different uh, um, can anyone film find? festivals. It's not online yet, but oh. it's, um, it's a film called Suspicions. It's Suspicions. Di it's directed by uh, Dylan Spevacek. He's a. Uh, Is he in Connecticut? Yes, he's oh, okay. uh, he's from he's a Granby native. Um, re really talented uh, director and writer. I'm really excited. I saw a rough cut of it, and it's it's really yeah. It's cool. Well, it's I, cool. I I saw the the clip. I I thought it was very cool and stylistic and it was very high quality oh it's the what they use for cameras and editing and lighting it was it was done it was done right he he's wanted to do this for years and he waited and waited and he did it and it was it was right. done right so i'm excited so like that that part of uh performing i love as well uh, my brother and i are actually in the process of writing a, a psychological thriller that we're planning on shooting sometime next either summer or fall um, really? So we're going to hire a film crew and everything, and I'm sure we're going it, to. It's a short film, but we want to mm -hmm. try to again do it right and um, you know have it be a good enough quality to submit to festivals and and that kind of thing. So you know, it's, it, what, what I'm doing in five years, you said you asked yeah. um, something involved with film that'd be right. cool. Like I mean, I eventually want to have my own um, you know camera and stuff. I don't have that stuff yet, but right. I, I can see that being a big part of my right performing yeah. well this but it's it's really sweet that you you share the passion with your brother is oh, he yeah. into acting too and he's he's done it a few times you know he's not it's not a passion for him as mm -hmm. it, as it is for me but he says he, he we're both going to be actors in this movie we're writing and he's really excited about it so i think he wants to right. branch a little bit but um no, we both have been movie buffs since we've grown up you know our right. father introduced us to movies at a young age um probably some movies we probably shouldn't have seen you know yeah, <laughs> at, yeah. at the age but you know if anything it didn't 
you know, watching PG-13 and rated R movies, you know, at a young age didn't traumatize us. If anything, it just right. made us all about it. So, right. and I think that was a big factor as well. So because we're both into movies, you know, we've, we've always wanted to make our own and now we're going to make it a reality. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So again, for all of you watching, the play we are in is called Honey La Brea, mm -hmm. The Lonely Fated. Honey La Brea, The Lonely Fated. And it's at Farmington Valley Stage Company. You can find that at fvsc.org. Farmington Valley Stage Company. It opens November 3rd. 3rd and 4th at 8. 5th is a matinee. And then November 11th and 12th. What was the name of the show again? Honey La Brea. Yeah. Yeah. The Lonely Phaeton. Okay, I'm just, honey. Just checking. Now, in Phaeton, <laughs> it's spelled T-H-E-T-A-N. Phaeton. What? What's a Phaeton, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> well, a Phaeton, um, it's, uh, it's what Scientologists refer um, to their, what was it, soul? It's spiritual being. Their spiritual being, their soul, yeah. Their spiritual yeah. being. But, it, but what Scientology believes is that you're... You're invaded by spiritual beings. You're invaded by Phaetons. Right. It's not just your own. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have good Phaetons. You can have bad Phaetons. Yeah. Things like that. And I, I, I'm not sure how much, um, how many have seen like the, the documentary going clear, mm -hmm. but Scientology is not going through a real um, good phase right now. No, not at all. <laughs> Which is why and, I'm not too worried about what we're doing, because like you know, exactly. like like the director and playwright said, there's bigger fish to fry there's, right there's now. There's a lot so bigger fish I think to fry. I think we're okay in, in uh, Collinsville. Right. Well, and plus, <laughs> just because um, Jacques and I can be a little paranoid, we didn't we didn't use any of their of their direct quotes right. of what their trademark terms are yep. or anything, and we changed names. Yeah. But. What I really am so fascinated with is that there are still people, like for instance, at the at the Emmys, the, the actress who won. She won at the Emmys. Yeah. And then it came out that she was into Scientology. Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot like there's another actress who's in Orange is the New Black. Oh, that's right. Who's also I in about Scientology. That. Yeah. And then of course we have Tom Cruise. We have John Travolta. We have Kirstie Alley, mm -hmm. and it's fascinating to me how they are still just blinders on, do not want to hear anything bad. Well, I didn't. You, someone said that um, you know because of their position or wherever they are in the in the church, they have like power, and that's over people or something like um, people that work for them or something. So it's. You know, they're in such a position of power that they, they don't want to leave because it's just... Right. Well, Tom, you, yeah. well they, they, they say Tom Cruise is, is that way because yeah. they, he's treated so well. That, right. That's, yeah. yeah. I mean, and he would, he would need to give up a lot if he gave this up. Right. But it does, it does make you think, why are people... It, it's like, what are, what are you thinking? And again, what I love about our comedy mm -hmm. is that it just shows that I really think that we all just want to be happy. Right. And it, I think the thing that separates us is what path we choose. Exactly. And some are lucky enough to be born with people who support them, love them, and guide them. And many, many, many people are not. Right. So they need to find something outside of themselves. I, I, was, I, I kind of feel like adults are still looking somehow to go home, to mm -hmm. have that feeling that you had, you know, yeah. that... Everything was going to be okay, and I'm important. Right. And I really, really understand that now, even about Scientology. Right. I you mean, know? I feel that's another thing that um, Honey and Scott share together is that they, they don't have any support system. Right. And they're looking for one, and Scott seems to have found his, and Honey, you know, sees this as another form of support. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, as different as the characters are, there are a lot of similarities which drew them to Cyanomics. Right. And um, again, again, as the show progresses, the truth comes out and you say, oh, yeah, this yeah. is an insight to why, you know, yeah, people do weird well, things like for friends. And, yeah. It's like a family. It's wonderful that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're going to have to wind it up pretty soon already. Sure. It goes fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so what's the name of the play, hmm, Andrew? <sighs> no, we just said <laughs> it. Honey La Brea and the Lonely Thetan. And where is it at? 
uh, Farmington Valley Stage Company in okay. Collinsville. In Collinsville. The Canton Ville. Town Hall. And it opens? No November 3rd? <laughs> November 3rd, yeah. Yes, November 3rd. Is this third. Friday? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's this Friday. <gasps> oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> November 3rd. Yep, very soon. Oh my God, so soon. It's, it's Real soon. Yeah. But I'm, excited. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward oh, to it. Oh, it's going to be wild. I'm excited. And yeah. if any of you come out to see it, please stop and say hello. <laughs> and also, I want to thank our director, Shane. Mm hmm. Shane Kegler. Kegler. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to thank <laughs> Ingrid Smith, mm -hmm. Jacques Lamar, Doreen Cohen, who's in charge of the Farmington Valley Stage Company. Mm -hmm. And phenomenal. I want to thank you. Oh, thank you. And thank you. Yeah, it's we've been, had so much fun doing this. It's been a pleasure. I, I would love to work with you again. Oh, it's, yeah. It's been great. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yep. You so. just ride my coattails. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'd be happy to if it's going to. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm doing it right now. Yeah, like, like <laughs> I always, I, I always say, I'm a, I'm a legend in my own mind. And that's all that matters. Th exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, on that note, we'll see you at Farmington Valley Stage Company. Thanks again for tuning in to Cameras Rolling. And, oops, this is a wrap.